that. But actions like that Iran took are not only destabilizing, but um, they fly in the face of the, the, the rules-based order that we are seeking to uphold. May I follow up? Sure. So I don't understand how my question is hypothetical. It's a public uh, statement by a U.S. official that, quote, respond through appropriate means, unquote. What are appropriate means in this instance? Well, I'm not going to, but your, your, the way you had phrased it, I believe at first was if this happens, then, or what further actions take? No. Well, let me just say that I, I again, I'm not going to forecast what means we're going to take. I don't think that would be a good, I don't think it'd be a good way to show our cards uh, from here. I think um, I would let uh, Mr. Sullivan's statements stand for itself. Um, Again, we are going to work with our partners and allies, and we continue to work with our partners and allies in the region. Um, and you know, I'm not going to, I'm not just going to go down um, a path of like potentially telling you what we could or could not do. I just don't think that's helpful at this time. Has this incident been discussed during the phone call today between the secretary and his Israeli counterpart? We'll have a readout shortly, and from there you can see what was discussed. Yeah. Anyone else here? Yes. The Gordon Sputnik News Russia. I have a couple of questions, if I may. Okay. Thank you. My first question is about yesterday's uh, press briefing. General Milley said that he tried to reach his Russian counterparts to discuss the incident in Poland, but he was unsuccessful. And so my question is, what did he want to accomplish with this call? What, what was the idea behind this I would this direct call? you to his staff. Okay, and my second question is about arms inspections in Ukraine. Are there any findings already, or are they still on? I have nothing to read out at this time. When I do, I'll let you know. Okay. Anyone Thanks. else? Yeah. Uh, Brandon Clark from the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Oh, nice to see you in the briefing room. Thank you. It's <laughs> first time here. Okay. Um, Australia has been struck by a couple of pretty major cyber attacks recently, one emanating, it appears, from Russia. I'm just wondering, have you had, has the Defence Department had any communication with Australia about those attacks? Um, and would you see such an attack at the moment? It's hard to see whether or not there's speculation about whether or not it's been um, uh, not orchestrated, but at least with the, uh, some sort of Russian government okay. Would you see a similar attack in America as being a, an attack by a foreign entity? And how, how, how would you see such an attack in Australia? Well, in terms of an attack on Australia, again, Cyber attacks are incredibly dangerous. We have here from um, uh, on uh, from the department, other agencies have worked with our Australian counterparts and continue to work with them. I don't have a call to read out from the secretary per se, but of course we are in touch at different levels with the Australian government. Um, in terms of your second question, I just want to—can you repeat? It? I just want to make sure I'm understanding it correctly. There's now um, Australia, Australia's trying to analyze exactly what this attack meant, who's behind mm -hmm. it. Would you see a similar attack? In this case, it was Australian private information being taken, held for ransom. And although there is no direct evidence, at least publicly, that it was orchestrated by the Russian government, if a similar attack occurred in the United States, where um, people from Russia, for example, mm -hmm. or another country uh, were taking that kind of information, would you see that as being effectively a, an attack on America by a foreign country? Well, again, that's a hypothetical. Um, fortunately, that, is not, that has not happened, and I'm not going to um, engage in hypotheticals from here. Uh, but I thank you for the question, but just not going to get into that. Um, OK, yes, I'll take one more, and then I'll wrap it up. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, with the recent uh, Ukraine forces that they achieved but in the battleground that they did against the Russian forces, so th does the DOD think that Ukraine today uh, is in a position of strength to start a negotiation uh, with Russia? Well, I would, again, and I think the secretary and the chairman spoke to this, it is up to Ukraine to decide when they want to negotiate. Uh, the secretary, uh, you know, convened the Ukraine contact group yesterday to work with our partners and allies around the world to ensure that Ukraine has what it needs in this war against Russia. and. You know, just to remind folks here, but this war could end tomorrow. Uh, this war could end now. Uh, Russia has the opportunity, the choice to make, uh, to decide to pull its troops, to remove its equipment, to get its systems out of um, Ukraine, and um, and 
you know, be held responsible for invading a sovereign nation. And so, you know, I, I would let Ukraine um, speak to when it's ready uh, to to negotiate. But I think you heard pretty strongly from the secretary and from the chairman yesterday that um, we are we are committed to providing Ukraine what it needs, and we are going to continue to provide Ukraine what it needs for the long haul. Okay, great. Thanks all. Um, happy Friday, Thursday. Happy Thursday. And I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> yes, yeah.